Hello everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to make a D&D character in D&D 5th edition. Before you join any Spokane Public Library D&D campaigns, you should make a character first. And I recommend that you make a character first just because, as you'll see, it doesn't take very long to make a character if you're just going through it really fast. But making this, the, the decisions and um, choosing exactly who you want your character to be can be time consuming. So please have your character made ahead of time. And the way that I recommend, especially for new players, to make a new D&D character is to use D&D Beyond. This is because all you have to do is make your choices. It adds those choices to the character sheet for you and it makes sure that you don't miss any steps or anything like that. So the very first thing you need to do is go to your web browser and type in www.dndbeyond.com. And it won't take you to this page that you see on your screen. You'll see a, uh, a login screen or a create a new account screen. If you have an account, go ahead and log in. If you do not have an account, please go ahead and create one. It's free to make a D&D Beyond account. Once you've done so, you'll see this screen that you see in front of you here. And the first thing you're gonna do is go all the way up to the top right corner and you're gonna see this drop down here and you're going to click characters. This screen shows all the characters that you have made. You can have up to six for free. Uh, and you, we're going to ignore these characters here and we're gonna create a new character. And the best way to start out, especially for beginners, as it says here, is to click standard. Okay, this page, I don't need you to do very much at all. All you need to do is choose a character name so we're going to make a character and his name is going to be Bill. And you can pick a, a, a portrait for your character. So click on that portrait and here are all the choices. There's a lot of them. So take your time, choose one that matches, uh, matches the character you want to make. We're going to choose this one and click apply. So there we have it, character name and portrait. That's all we need to do for home. And I want you to take note right here on the character builder bar here. We have different steps that will light up. Right now we're on home. We're gonna go through race, class, abilities, description, equipment, and then what's next. And that will show you uh, just kind of a little detailed pathway to how we're going to make our character. So next, we're gonna click this blue button here that once we hover over it, it says next. We're gonna click that. And here's a list of all of the different classes that we can make. You're, um, you're welcome to select any of these classes. I recommend going with the player's handbook versions though. Um, your DM is most likely to know those ones better. Uh, and still there are a lot of options available to you. And if you don't know what these are, like what maybe you don't know what a tiefling is, you click on tiefling and it shows you like a basic description here and then all of the traits that that race has. So, and that's just kind of benefits, like your, um, if you're a tiefling, you can, you have dark vision, so you can kind of see in the dark. But what we're gonna do is, let's say, what, what's a dragonborn look like? So here's another option of different things you can choose. And once you've chose a race, we're gonna choose dragonborn, even though it doesn't really match our portrait, we choose that race, and you'll see that the whole screen changes and uh, it gives you a little basic description of what a dragonborn is, and then it gives you these three boxes here. All of these little downward carrots are gonna show that you can click on those and they'll show you more. But what I really want you to notice is that there is a blue exclamation point right here. So when you see that, it means that there's a choice that you need to make that's important for who your character is going to be. So make sure you always click on those. So we're gonna click on that and we need to make a choice relating to our draconic ancestry. So what that means is what kind of dragonborn are we and what kind of dragon ancestry does our dragonborn have? And that means what color of a dragon um, that ancestry is related to and then that color relates to different things like uh, damage types and damage resistances. So you can look at this table to decide which one you think is most appealing and uh, let's just pick a black dragon, for example. 
And you'll notice that as soon as we click Black Dragon, it's selected here and our little blue exclamation point goes away. So that means we've made a choice and there's nothing else we need to do on this page because there's no more exclamation points. However, it's important to go down to say breath weapon and open that up. And this will describe what a breath weapon is. Your character can do these things with these little drop downs. And then you see now it's an upward carrot. You can close that to make it to minimize it. And you can also click damage resistant. So you also have a damage resistant associated with your draconic ancestry. Our draconic ancestry is black, so we have acid resistance. So that's all that that means there. But maybe you get halfway through this and you don't like the options available to you as Dragonborn. You can always go up here under the portrait and click change race. And I want you to notice also, so again, we can go to player's handbook and notice that there are some that have uh, number twos by them. This means that there's two different types of this race that you can choose from. So let's click on dwarf. So if you want to be a dwarf, you get to make a choice between a hill dwarf and a mountain dwarf. In the same way that we did with a dragonborn, once you click on it, it gives you some information about that race. And you can go ahead and read all of this. I recommend that you read all of these extra little sections so that you know more about your character and how your character will function in the campaign and what the different things that your character can do. So if you scroll down here, you'll see all the different things that come with that race. And we're gonna say, yes, we wanna be a mountain dwarf. We're gonna change our race to that one. And just like when we selected the dragonborn, You'll notice that there's all these uh, downward facing carrots and um, there's also a blue exclamation point. So let's go straight to that exclamation point because like I said before, that means there's a choice we need to make about our character. And this choice means that we choose a tool proficiency. So because we're a dwarf, we have the ability to choose a proficiency or in a certain tool. So these are the options available to us. Once we click this drop down, we can be proficient in brewers supplies, mason supplies, or smiths tools. So let's say that we want to do smiths tools. And again, once we've made our choice, that little blue exclamation part mark goes away. And so again, we're, we've decided we want to be a mountain dwarf. So I would encourage you to always read what each of these things mean. What does it mean that we have dark vision? Or what does it mean that we have dwarven resilience or dwarven combat training, stone cutting and dwarven armor training? Please read up on these so you understand your character better. So we've chosen our character's name, their portrait and their race. Next, we're gonna go over to number two here. So you can click the number two or we can go over here and click next. And that will take us to our classes. There are quite a few a uh, few options when it comes to classes in D&D. So I would urge you to go through each one of these, read about them to decide if that's what you wanna be, if that's the kind of class you wanna have. There's lots to learn about them. And this is another reason why I encourage everybody to do this before joining the campaign. It doesn't take a lot to choose one, and by choose one, I mean just click on an option, but to make the choice that you want and to read up on your character, it does take much longer. So let's go ahead and let's say we wanna be a wizard. Okay, so now that we've selected wizard, I want you to notice a few things. This here, primary ability is intelligence and the saves for this class are intelligence and wisdom. So those are gonna be your three most important, or your two most important, excuse me, um, ability scores for this class. If we were to have chosen a barbarian, the primary ability would have been strength and the saves would have been strength and constitution. So the two most important ability scores for a barbarian class are strength and constitution. But we're gonna choose wizard and I'm choosing wizard because I want to show you a little bit more of the spell casting uh, elements that have to do with a lot of the classes in Dungeons and Dragons. And um, something that is very important to do with any spellcasting class is to go through and read all of this stuff. It's important, so see there's quite a bit extra here. Um, it's important to read through this so you know how your class functions. If this looks a bit intimidating to you, then I recommend maybe starting with a non-spellcasting class, like a, a fighter class, 
it's pretty straightforward and there isn't um, for, for new players it's a it's a easier start there's less to learn and to know about your character but if you want to do spell casting please just read ahead and you'll be just fine so we decide we want to be a wizard okay so let's add that class just like in the race section we have a blue a blue bubble with an exclamation point so that means there's a choice so we need to make two choices at first level so here we are we get to make uh, some we get to choose two skills from arcana history insight investigation medicine and religion I'm just gonna choose arcana and history it's really up to you it depends on what kind of character you want to make there are no right or wrong decisions here it's just really up to you and uh, if you don't know what these things mean just you can go ahead and Google them what is arcana D&D 5th edition and you'll get an answer in Google real easy or you can look them up in the player's handbook uh, you can purchase your own player's handbook if you if you prefer that route but we also have players handbooks available for checkout at the library so once you've made those choices again just like before it's important to look at these drop downs and see what's here uh, so there's arcane recovery and different things that are important for you to know about your wizard character please click this drop down and just take a look there's a lot to learn it doesn't take that long to read but you should read it so you understand a little bit about your wizard spellcasting class and we will come back to this when we choose spells which brings me to my next point we've just looked at class features do not miss this section I miss this all the time click on spells so when we look at the spells section we're going to start here at the prepa prepared spells and the prepared spells those are just spells that your uh, your wizard has studied ahead of time and kind of knows better because they've studied them ahead of time um, they are not all the spells that they know they know much more spells but they've kind of studied up on that one particular one so it's ready to go if they need it so right now we don't know any and our spell book is a list of all the all the spells that that we know uh, and here is where you can add spells so you get to choose three cantrips and you get to prepare one spells and it says we have zero known but we'll know more than that in a minute but this is where you know how many spells to add so first a cantrip is a level zero spell as indicated right here there's a zero uh, a level zero spell is a spell that can be cast uh, infinite number of times it doesn't cost anything it doesn't take up a spell slot it doesn't take any spell points or anything at all it's cast as many times as you like typically cantrips are not as powerful as a level one two three and beyond spell the higher the spell number like a fourth level spell is a stronger spell than a level one and definitely stronger than a cantrip so let's pick our three cantrips first get those out of the way these are all the cantrips you can choose from at level one so you can click on them just like other things on D&D Beyond and it tells you what they are so go ahead and read through those and make your choices I'm just gonna pick the first three to keep it simple and then we have to choose our prepared spells but first how many spells do we actually know if we go back to our class features go back to spell casting which I hope you have read at this point um, you'll notice that when it see at cantrips at first level you'll know three cantrips of your choice from the wizard spell list and then here in your spell book at first level you have a spell book containing six first level wizard wizard spells of your choice so there you go so it's also important your spell book is a repository of the wizard spells you know except for your cantrips which are fixed in your mind so we always know our cantrips we don't always know the spells in our spell books but we get to or have them ready to go we have them studied up prepared if you will but we have six of the ones that we know so let's go back to our spells and we're going to choose add spells and we're going to choose first level spells so this filters out all the cantrips and there's only first level spells here again read about each one and make a choice but we learn six spells I'm just choosing the first six so when we go look at our spell book now we have 
three cantrips and six first level spells. And what you'll notice here is that there's a prepare button by each one. And as seen right here, at first level, we can prepare one spell. So let's just choose one. You'll choose the one you want to have ready to cast. So you know all of these, but you can only, at the next encounter, you can only cast, say, this one, because these are not prepared. They're not ready. This one is. That's what that means. All right, so now we have our class features decided and our spells decided. So we have everything ready for our wizard at level one. However, there will be points throughout this campaign where you will level up. And so I'm just going to bring your attention to this now since we're on this page. At level one, we're all ready to go. But uh, let's say you get to the end of a session and your dungeon master says, okay, you have all leveled up to level two. By the next session, make sure you level up your character to level two. So all I would want you to do is come back to this section of the character builder in D&D Beyond and you'll click class and we're leveling your wizard up to level two. So we click level two and we didn't get any bubbles or anything so we don't have any choices to make in our class feature or in our spells but maybe in our class features oh look we get to make a, a cho one choice at second level. So because we've reached second level we get to choose an arcane tradition so you get to choose um, to, to have your magic go in a certain direction. So if we, we get two choices, School of Evocation, and then if we choose that one, we get uh, these two extra options. If we choose War Magic, we get these two options. So based on whichever one you choose, just you can click on it to learn um, a little bit more about what that adds to your class and will help you make your choice. So let's say we choose this school and then we go down to our spells and there wasn't any like I said there weren't any like bubbles here but something I always want you to check if you have a, a spell casting class we still have three and one it doesn't have like an additional number so if we were to say go to three so because we've leveled up to level three we can see here that we have three cantrips known and then we have one of two prepared spells of our six spells known so we can just prepare a second. See, these are able to click now before they were grayed out. We can click a second spell to prepare. So let's prepare that one. So now we have two spells prepared of the six spells we know. And so we're ready for level three. We didn't gain any spell features at level three. So we've done the things that we need to do here. But I don't want to, us to be level three just yet for this tutorial on how to make a character. Um, let's just start at level one. It'll ask you if you want to go back to level one, and we do. So all of our stuff is still the same. Oh, except for we have, it says two spells are prepared. Gives us some red here because that's not the way it should be. So we need to go to our spell book and we need to unprepare one of them because we can only have one prepared spell at level one. So we just made that choice and we're back to level one. So now we have our spells and our class features chosen for our wizard, and I've shown you how to level up your wizard once you reach a different level if you need to. It's really as simple as that. So the next thing is our abilities. I'm going to recommend that of, you don't, you can just ignore all of this down here. Um, it's just more calculations and stuff. I, you don't need to pay attention to that. But if you're, we're going to choose our ability scores, and I recommend the standard array. It's just the most balanced. You can do manual or rolled or point by, but um, those can kind of come out with some very interesting character numbers. But I recommend the standard array. This just gives you a set number that you invest points into. So earlier, when I drew attention to our wizard class, I said that intelligence and wisdom were our most important scores. So we're going to give them the 15 and the 14 our two highest scores. And then from there, we can um, we can allocate our points in different ways. So if you're looking at these, strength is your physical strength, dexterity is your agility, constitution is your hardiness, and a charisma is uh, basically how well you speak or how much of a smooth talker or not a smooth talker your character is. So you allocate your points 
in whichever way you want based on what kind of a person your character is. So um, just keep in mind that usually intelligence, wisdom, and charisma can also be spell um, spell casting classes like important ability scores. So keep those in mind if you're doing a different type of um, of a spell caster. So here uh, it doesn't really matter um, since this is just a character that we're just creating it's however you would like to build the rest but I do recommend that you keep those two points um, recommended in your class as your highest modifiers uh, when doing this part so that's it for abilities that's the only thing you need to do so let's click next now we choose the background so our character Bill uh, was somebody before this campaign started so this section just kind of explains who that somebody was so first we're going to talk about our background so we're going to choose any of these and they can be an urchin and again it pops up um, pops up the description of what that is a uh, pirate it explains what that is and um, on each one of these there's um, choices you get to make based on the pirate or the urchin you get to choose a few um, skills and or have some bonuses we're just going to say the bill was an acolyte and um, because Bill was an acolyte, Bill has a blue exclamation point because there's a bonus that comes with his class. He can speak two additional languages in addition to common. So we're just going to pick uh, Elvish and Orc so he can speak those languages. Um, it doesn't matter what you choose. There's no right or wrong answers here. You're just choosing what makes the most sense for your character. And then because Bill is an acolyte, uh, he has shelter of the faithful and um, as a bonus uh, here are some suggested characteristics these are optional these are different personality traits that you can just click add and it'll add it to your character sheet um, if that's something you want to to be a part of your character this just helps you flesh out your character you do not need to use any of these you can use one you can use two you can use none they're just a little helpful um, ways to kind of figure out what kind of character our bill is <laughs> and then same thing with things down here your character details um, you need to choose an alignment um, Spokane Public Library is not allowing um, teen patrons to choose evil characters it just makes it really difficult to um, have the party aligned and helping each other out and uh, doing teamwork that way so no evil characters please anything else is up to you if you don't really know what alignment means just google it it's just kind of how your character behaves in the world morally I suppose um, and then you can choose a faith if you want one you don't have to have one if you don't know the faiths that are uh, available in D&D those can be found with a Google search again or you can use the player's handbook it has a list of everything in there as well and then lifestyle is just how much money you have so you can start wretched which is very poor or aristocratic which is very rich or anywhere in between so just go ahead and choose we're just gonna say bill is modest and it kind of describes who is most likely to be modest um, in this world um, as far as financially and then we'll just make bill lawful good um, and then these here these are just different things you could say what hair color you are what skin color what eye color and then um, personal characteristics uh, it's more of these these are the the traits uh, the personal characteristics that we chose um, here with the suggested characteristics those are added here so you can see um, things that you've chosen there just to kind of help flesh out your character again and then you can just add random notes if you like but again all of this stuff is more detailed you do not have to have any of this ready by the first session it's just to help you kind of role play your character a little bit better so the only thing you really need to choose in the description section is your background with this drop down uh, any any bonuses it says you get from that and then make sure that you choose under character details how much money you have because that'll start out that'll show you how much money your character starts with all right so next we're gonna go to equipment and this is uh, pretty straightforward I want you to choose equipment not gold because if every time a new person joined we had to go shopping that would just take way too much time so everybody just click equipment to start and then it'll give you these this or that options so quarter sack for a dagger component pouch or an arcane focus scholars pack or an explorers pack and for these packs it'll tell you what's in each one if you click on them 
and then a spell book comes with um, your wizard class then the then you get options for um, your starting equipment based on your background so because Bill is an acolyte Bill has a holy symbol and I'm gonna make that an amulet you get to choose what kind um, you get to prayer brook or prayer wheel Bill has a prayer wheel and then these other things just come along with it but say if you don't want maybe Bill has allergies and he doesn't like incense we can take incense off Bill doesn't carry incense it's whatever you want it to be all right and then once you've chosen everything make sure you click add a starting equipment and I want you to be very careful here and see all of these little green boxes use we're gonna click use and we're gonna click wield and all that does is make sure that these things are added to your character sheets I don't know why it doesn't do that automatically I really think it should but make sure that you just click in use and wield on all of them um, other possessions are just kind of adding those things that were in here but you can also edit your possessions so let's say we want um, oh I added this earlier you can add a letter from mom you can add a heart oops oh my goodness a heart shaped rock things like that I will allow you to add whatever you want here as long as it's not giving you like a a certain magical or combat advantage as long as it's just a thing that your character carries sure that's kind of fun and then the rest of this this just shows you what your currency is because you have a modest um, lifestyle you start off with 30 gold pieces and then the items these are just different things you can add I would like that you do not add items because again that gives you a magical or combat advantage that I do not like people to have necessarily unless we've talked it over first uh, okay so very last thing we make our way next this is the part where you get to print off your character sheet if that's the route you want to go there's a few different options you can use here so you can um, probably the most basic straightforward option is export to PDF so we can click on that and then we go down here and we click to download and you'll see here at the bottom we've downloaded our PDF and this is our character sheet all ready to go with all the information we chose on the sheet so we have access to all of it this is blank because this is like the your hair color and how tall you are and your backstory and stuff that you can fill in later on but everything else that we chose is here on this sheet so you can go to the top right and print this and so you can have a physical copy with you while you play or we can go over here and we can choose a view character sheet and so if you want to bring a tablet or a um, or a laptop to uh, our D&D sessions you're more than welcome to do that this just has sort of the website version of your character sheet so it has all of that stuff that's on there but you can also click on your spells and your inventory and your feats and and the nice thing about doing it this way is if you want to look up acid splash it has all the information on the things that you have here so it's just kind of very convenient but that's up to you it's it's really up to how you want to do it um, you can also download the D&D Beyond app for your mobile dev device or your phone and you can um, look at your character sheet using the app as well the very last thing I'd like to invite you to do is uh, join our D&D Beyond campaign there's a campaign link that I will leave in the description that you can click on and you can just add your character to that campaign that way your dungeon master can view your character sheet so if you have any questions they can pull it up on their computer and and look it up and help you find an answer or help you find the the, the thing you're looking for right there so it's just awfully convenient but you do not have to do that either um, and finally if you I know there was a lot covered in this video if there is any questions you have please just come to your D&D session at the Spokane Public Library a little bit early and talk to your dungeon master or stay a little bit late if you have time to do that and uh, they would be more than happy to answer any of your questions thank you for watching hope to see you soon bye